Tall buildings As the chemicals They take us higher The night's young And it's just begun As she puts her hand in mine We want to chase the night Hi there, everyone. I'm back. Yes, I'm back. I'm fed, I'm watered, I'm raring to go. Got my juice so that I can keep my throat <coughs> not so. <clears throat> right, I just had a phone call before coming on live. And my son's mother-in-law, right, her name's Angie, right, um, she went out today, I think she was taking the grandkids back home because she has them Saturday night to Sunday, because, because of them going to school Monday, she, they go her home on the Sunday. They drops her, the cat goes to take her home. And some guy in her where she lived had only smashed all the windows in the ground floor flat onto the left as you go in, and also smashed her bedroom window in at the back. So they've had a guy come out and fix it, and boiled it up. And I said, "Babe, you need to get out of there." 
You know what I mean? That isn't right. Why if she'd have had my, our grandson there, say he wasn't at school tomorrow, he'd have been in that bedroom because he, he likes his quiet space. He likes his own time. And he goes in and he, he sits on my bed watching his tablet and, or my TV. You know what I mean? Why if he'd have been in there, it would just scare the life out of him. You know what I mean? They'd have been hysterical, them two little ones would have been. I said, no, so you got to get out of there. So I said she can come and stay at mine if she wants, because I've got bunk beds, so I've got <laughs> a single bed if she wants the bottom one. Right, and... Um, so I think she's going to stay at my son's tonight. Because I've worked tomorrow and whatever. And she's going to phone the, the house and go up and say, look, it's a party now, I need out of there. You know what I mean? And I, I told her to try and get, um, what, in in Scotland they call them network flats. It's supposed to be for a temporary, stay only, right? And I said, tell, ask them if they've got any in the, the where I live. And the block just right opposite where I, I live. Them are the two best blocks in this area. Right? Do not have them. Do not take any other blocks. Do not, I said, do not. I know the area. I know the blocks. They're not nice. These two blocks where I live, they're not brilliant. I'm not saying they're fantastic, but they're, my block is better than the one across from me. Better than that one. I've been here what now since twenty twenty one. Yeah, I moved in, in twenty one. Yeah. So I've been here since twenty March twenty one. So that's twenty one to twenty two, twenty two, twenty two. Three years and I've never had any trouble. Never. Right? So She's going to sort that out tomorrow and see what she can get, see what I can do for her. Anyway, like I said, we are going to continue where we left off. Right. And... It's in the exhibit part, the exhibits, okay? So this is just about Harry, who he suspects is behind Sebastian, <coughs> right? You don't need to read that. If you, As I've said, hold on, I'll pop it back up again. Bangers. Go to my Discord, click on that link. Go to the Sebastian. Thread and your phone. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, you'll find a link. Click on that link and it'll open you up and it'll give you two PDFs to download. And one PDF is the exhibit, and one PDF is the. Oh, don't, I'll tell you. The At Night Media LLC for True True Day, True or L, whatever. <coughs> right. So, let's continue because we've got a lot to get through. Now, this is obviously a reply to Mr. Lesniak, the lawyer who's involved in all this, for to what a letter to him from Stephanie Jo Trude, who is being named in this lawsuit.
Right, and it just says this letter will serve as formal notification that our firm, our firm, which is Dylan McCangless, Kangless, King, Coulter, and Graham LLP, attorneys at law, they've been retained by Stephanie Jo Trude. Miss Trude directly to me as a legal counsel. In addition, you do not have my permission or her consent to communicate with her directly or indirectly in person or through a third party without my prior knowledge and written consent. Well, he is a lawyer. I think he knows that. With respect to the allegation contained in your September 6, 2024 letter to Miss Trude, I have reviewed the allegations with her and she denies each of the allegations as I said. As anyone would, right? With respect to your emergency petition for a preliminary preliminary injunction and temporary restraining order, there's no legal basis to seek such relief to initiate legislation legislation against mistruth in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, and to do so without appropriate prior notice to me as legal counsel as Miss. For Miss Trude. If you proceed, proceed with this baseless course of action, we will vigorously defend Miss Trude and seek appropriate financial remedies from the court. Uh, finally, I ask you to direct your clients to immediately cease and desist from making defamatory statements regarding Miss Trude. If your clients ignore this request and continue to make defamatory Statements regarding Ms. Drew, we are prepared to initiate lit- litigation to protect our reputation and business interests. <coughs> Protein talk already. <coughs> right. That's just back and forth, you know what I mean, what their emails. Like I said, if you want to see all these emails and all this information, please go to my Discord, go to the Sebastian Rogers thread, click there, you find a link, click on that link and you'll open up and you see two PDFs to download. And then you can go through it at your own pace. Right, this is the declaration of Michelle Klubine. Cl- 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 right. I'm not really sure who this is. I'm not sure if she's a, um, a friend or relative or something. I don't know. Michelle Klubine, being duly sworn according to law, he by deposed and affirmed the following. Michelle Clubine, CPT, residing at, declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, pursuant to 18 PICS 4904, <sighs> relating to unsworn falsification to authorities, that the foregoing is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. On September the 30th, my husband, 2024, my husband left for work at about 3.15pm. Not long after, around 3.30 or 3.45, there was a hard knock at the door. Now this is what got me. Right, listen to this. I was home alone with my grandson at the time. Now remember that she said I was home alone. Right, with my grandson at the time. And the knock startled me. When I opened the door, there was a man who identified himself as an FBI postal inspector. He told me that there had been some threatening or or harassing mail sent to this address. Right away, something felt off. His badge didn't look right to me and his overall demeanour made me uneasy. As I asked more questions, Especially when I mentioned, so she must be the aunt. She must be the aunt. 
especially when I mentioned our missing nephew Sebastian Rogers out of Tennessee, the man's behaviour shifted. He avoided eye contact and quickly changed the subject, almost as though he didn't want to address Sebastian at all. That moment set off alarm bells in my mind and I didn't feel safe. My son, who was home with me, yes, she said she was home alone with her grandson, but she wasn't, his, her son was there. My son, who was home with me, approached the door. When he reached out to shake the man's hand, the man looked startled and uncomfortable, as if he wasn't expecting anyone else to be there. Yeah, because they've been sitting in a car probably waiting for your husband to leave. My son used to work night shifts, but he happened to be at home that day. The man hurriedly tried to leave after this interaction and I noticed another person sitting in a black SUV outside. From what I could see, it looked like a Ford Explorer, though I wasn't sure. What concerned me most was how this how the person in the passenger seat kept turning his head away as if to avoid being seen. This only made me feel more certain that things that something wasn't right. I couldn't help but think that these people were not who they said they were. They weren't. They weren't. They weren't FBI. After the man left, I was shaken and worried for my safety. Obviously, because they now know where you live, you know what I mean? And they know that your husband lives about 3.30 to go to work. I reached out to MSB with Dog the Bounty Hunter and Nick the Hack's team to share what had happened and they put me in touch with Nick the Hack from Acknog and I also spoke with Mr Dog. I had seen MSB working with Dog the Bounty Hunter's team so I trusted them. I also reached out to YouTube, YouTube crowd known as CJ in the comment section of his live stream. I know who CJ is. I felt like I needed to get the word out and let people know about this strange encounter. I didn't know who else to turn to and Nicola Hack's team was the only source of support at that moment. I've been home at home I've been home at home I've been home alone a lot and I'm disabled, so this experience has left me feeling incredibly vulnerable. I fear retaliation from Christopher and Katie P Foot as well as Christopher, Chris's parents, Terry and Catherine B. Sox, who seem to be financially backing these online creators that are being harassing us. My husband and I have noticed that Queen Bee, a YouTube creator, has received over 1,000 memberships from anonymous donor over the... What? Over the past two weeks. This massive financial backing only intensifies my concerns that are organising a large effort to get Target and harass me. Has received over a thousand memberships from an anonymous donor. How do you get a thousand memberships from an anonymous donor unless you buy them? My husband even asked me if the person in the passenger seat of the SUV resembled one of the YouTube creators who had been causing us problems. I tried to get a better look, but every time I looked outside, the person turned the head, hiding their face. This only heightened my fear that these bad actors had taken their harassment from online into the real world. Yeah. And it was obviously someone, perhaps it was someone who she did know who she had seen before, and that's why they didn't want to see her to see the face of the weather. The very next day, on October the 1st, my husband contacted the Oklahoma City branch of the FBI to report what had happened. We knew this couldn't be a legitimate visit from the FBI. If they were truly concerned about locating Sebastian, they would have asked to come inside and check the house, but they didn't. The entire interaction felt like it wasn't meant to, it was meant to scare me, not to help find my missing nephew. It's to say, we know where you leave. We know where you leave. We can track you. 
you know, when your husband goes to work, you know what I mean? What has made this entire situation even more concerning is the involvement of a family friend, Beth. Beth has inserted herself into the situation in, in unsettling ways. She barely knows Kate brave f- f- people, having only met her once at a family funeral. However, Hold on. So is this from Katie's side of the family? Could this be someone from Katie's side of the family? However, she reached out to another YouTube creator named Duchess and claimed that Kate was her cousin. Okay. This combined connection combined with Beth's strange behaviour and involvement with this online creator makes me feel even more unsafe. I can't help but wonder how deep this harassment is. Beth was also trying to sell a fifth wheel trailer around the same time Kate was in Myrtle Beach. Only an hour away from her. The timing of these events coupled with Beth's communication with the YouTube creators targeting us has left me feeling even more isolated and afraid. Your Honour, I'm a disabled woman from Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma, simply trying to protect my family. Ever since my nephew Sebastian went missing, my life has been turned upside down. I live in constant fear that these people come back to my home or that others associated with the Proudfoot family will try to harm me or my family. Wow. I've always been doxxed online with my personal information spread across the internet. Now it seems like this harassment has escalated into real life intimidation. I can't sleep. I'm constantly looking over my shoulder and I feel unsafe in my own home. Please, I'm asking for protection and justice. I never imagined I'd be in this position, but I'm terrified. I don't know who to trust anymore. I'm asking the court to help me protect my family and myself from further harm. I am fully prepared to testify under oath and provide detailed accounts of these organised and sustained attacks, including the incitement of harassment and violence, the continuous threat to my life and the severe emotional and professional harm I have endured as a direct result of their actions. Christ, I'm losing my voice here. I think I think I'll be drinking the whole flipping bottle tonight. <clears throat> this is just to say, swear, hang firm and verify on your penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States of America. Right. That the foregoing is true and correct and I, I understand that false statements hearing are made subject to the penalties of perjury and other applicable laws. But you see, the thing is, right, we've had one go to... Someone go to that um, Hong's, whatever house. We've had someone come into this woman's house. They need to know who these people are. And what, if, and what, if any, connection they have with any of these named YouTubers. Right? Because... As I said before, you talk on your channel. I talk on my channel, right? Now, if I had to falling out of a YouTuber or somewhere, that's between me and them. Not between you, me, you and them, right? And to be honest with you, I probably will not even discuss it on here. Because it doesn't belong on here. So... If you don't like what you're seeing in a case, right, then don't talk about it. Don't talk about it on your page because you don't know who is listening or watching. You don't know how people feel towards certain YouTubers. Some YouTubers have members that are 
rise and die, you know what I mean, members. They would do anything for them. So you, you don't know if some of these rise and die uh, subscribers or members are all there in the flipping head. They might not be. They might be Looney Tunes. The white straight jacket time, people. You know what I mean? You don't know who is listening. I don't know who's listening to my very bad commentary. Right? But I would not bring any hate onto my channel. I wouldn't. Oh, Declaration of Kenneth Klubai, I can't, right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just about to go and kill my cats. Pack it in now. What have I told you, Klubai? What? Don't stand there looking at me like I haven't done nothing. What have I told you? No fighting, no flipping fighting. Sorry about that, just had to read my cats to fight. Uh, the law's about fighting in my house. Right, so this now is a declaration of chemical bind, aka Uncle Taco. So this. Hold on, hold on. This person Michelle Klubine must be Mrs. Taco. Right? Because she's the wife to or partner to Kenneth Clubine, a.k.a. Uncle Taco. Uncle Taco is a friend or a relative who used to play online, I believe, with Sebastian. But hadn't done so for a few weeks or so before he went missing. So Uncle Taco is a relative of Seth. I swear to God, if I have to read them the right act again. God. Right. So this is Uncle Taco. If anyone's been watching this case very closely, Uncle Taco was mentioned before. And everyone's going, who's Uncle Taco? Who's Uncle Taco? And we thought, I thought, it was just a friend who they called Uncle Taco, but obviously not, he is the uncle to Sebastian. King of Clubbine, CPT, residing at, declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, pursuant to 18 PICS 4904, that the foregoing is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. Right. On the afternoon of September the 30th, 2024, my wife, Michelle Clubine, called me in a state of panic. She told me that a man claiming to be an FBI postal inspector had knocked on our door while I was at work. The man said he was investigating some kind of threatening or harassing mail that had been sent to our address. How would they know about some threatening or harassing mail that had been sent to their address. How would they know about that? How would the FBI or anyone know that they'd received any threatening or harassing mail? If they had. Even if they had. How would they know? So, that would... I'd be going, how would you know if I'd received any threatening? I haven't reported anything. I haven't received anything, so... You know what I mean? I knocked on our door while I was at work. The man said he was investigating some kind of threatening or harassing mail that had been sent out to our address. But everything about the situation seemed off to Michelle. 
She told me I had a man looked away and became uncomfortable when she mentioned our missing nephew, Sebastian Rogers. The whole encounter left her feeling unsettled and scared, especially when the man rushed off and avoided further questions. Right? And Michelle immediately called Nicola Hatt, someone she trusted from at night, after sharing what happened to the live com in the live comments of a YouTube creator named CJ, who was live at the time. I know who CJ is. Good YouTuber. Can you hear my cats moaning? Because I've read them the riot act. I've got food. They've got flipping food. Ugh. She needed someone to help make sense of this strange and unsettling situation and it was clear to me how frightened she was. By October the 1st, after hearing the full details of the encounter, I knew we needed to take action. I called the Oklahoma City branch of the FBI to report the incident. I told them everything Michelle had experienced from the man's odd behaviour to the black SUV he left in. Black SUV. I wanted to make sure this wasn't someone trying to harass or intimidate us, given the strange online activities surrounding our family due to Sebastian's disappearance. I wasn't willing to take any chances. I made it clear to the FBI that this felt more like a, just a random knock at the door. It felt like a threat. Around the same time, another issue began to raise concern. A mutual friend, former friend, Beth, had somehow become deeply involved in the chaos surrounding our family and the Proudfoots. Beth had only met Kate Proudfoot people once, years ago, when Uncle Don passed away. Oh, it was her uncle, not her grandfather. Her uncle, yeah. She's very close to her uncle, Don. Don. If you remember that interview that I played, right? She was very close. To, and he was the one that Seth went and asked for the hand in marriage to Katie. Beth had only met Kate P. Foot once years ago when Uncle Don passed away. I remember that occasion well, as it was the last time I saw Katie myself. But, somehow, Beth managed to interject herself into all of this, reaching out to an online creator you know, as Duchess, and claiming to be connected to Katie. Oh, so they're not related to Seth. They're related to Katie. Un Uncle Taco and... Auntie Taco, <laughs> right? I related to Katie because of the. How I know that now because of what he mentioned about the funeral being when Uncle Don passed away. You know what I mean? Seth wasn't at the funeral. All right. Beth somehow managed to interject herself into all of this, reaching out. Who'd want to interject themselves into a case, a missing child's case? Unless you had some actual, actual evidence. Hell no. I'd be sitting on the sidelines watching it all go on. I'm reporting to you like on here. Michelle and I couldn't understand how Beth had gotten so involved. It was troubling to us that she seemed to be making connections between herself and Katie's family that didn't seem genuine. This was particularly unsettling because it came around the, start, around the time of Sebastian's disappearance and it felt like Beth was inserting herself into the narrative in ways that seemed suspicious. I later learned that Beth even put Duchess in touch with Katie directly, further deepening her involvement. Ah... Right, okay. To make matters worse, I learned that in early May, Beth had been selling a fifth wheel RV and around the, that same time, Kate was in our safe of Beth in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, they went to Myrtle Beach. Don't worry about having a missing son. You go and sun yourself on the beach. Go on. 
This coincides silence was strange, especially given that Beth and Kate hadn't been in contact for years. Timing and proximity raised even more questions about how closely Beth was tied to this situation and whether she was being influenced by people connected to Kate or Chris people. Has, any, has the FBI spoke to Beth? Has the FBI checked all her properties? If she's got more than one property. Have they checked all her properties? Have they checked to see where she was on the 25th? Of February into 26th of February. Have they done all that? Because I would be. I'd be checking all that now. Right? Right, I'm going to write this down because I swear to God, these cats, they jump up on my TV unit and my TV's there and I'm going to have no freaking TV left. I told you about Pontus. I've written you the right after. Pack it in. Pack it in. Have I got me to the right after again? Have I? Have I? Toby? Bobby? Just settle down. Swear to cat. God, my two cats are worse than my grandchildren. Oh my God. I'm going to be looking into this, Beth, I think. Well, just got a pen. That works, hopefully. Oh, that one didn't work very good. Should be a pen around here somewhere. I should have lost the pen. Right. Got a pen. Beth. Shall I do a bit of digging on Beth? See who she is and where she... Doc, sir, maybe. No, I wouldn't do that. But I could look up and find out some information. Uh, the man at the door, the odd connections with Beth and the online activity from people trying to interfere with our lives all point to a coordinated effort to intimidate us. Your Honour, I'm just a man trying to protect my family. I don't know why people are targeting us, but I do know that we are in danger. My wife has been harassed online, and now strange men are showing up at our home. We try to live our lives quietly, but the situation keeps getting worse. I'm a fear for what might come next. So do I. Do you know what I mean? We don't know who these people are. Hold on, I've got to find my... Mike, cover. That keeps getting off top. We don't know who these people are that are going to the houses. Are they YouTubers or are they subscribers to certain YouTube channels that feel that these YouTubers are right and something needs to be done? You know what I mean? I don't know. We don't know anything. We don't know who they are. I'm fully prepared to testify under earth and provide detailed accounts of these organised and sustained attacks, including the incitement, harassment and violence, the continuous threat to my life and the severe emotional and professional harm I have endured as a direct result of their actions. Right, that seems just swearing that what is state is true. Exhibit 47, oh God. I'm going to go past this because this we can look at and never get all this sort of stuff. I've still got another file yet to go through. Well, I'm 232, so we've got another 100 pages left. So who's this guy? This is what I can understand because I couldn't find anything before. It's just got Exhibit 51. Was Exhibit 51 mentioned anywhere? I 
haven't have you heard me say exhibit 51 anywhere anyone who is this man who is he whose house is that Right, I don't know who he is. Perhaps we'll find out as you go exhibit 58. Right, Declaration of Andrew Griffin, aka Bullhorn Bay. Andrew Griffin, being duly sworn according to law, hereby dispose and affirm the following Andrew Griffin. Residing Act declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, pursuing that the foregoing is correct, true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. I affirm that I am ready, willing, and able to testify to these facts at trial. This declaration outlines the profound harm I have endured due to an organised campaign of harassment, defamation, and intimidation initiated by two individuals. Jessica Lee Seng, known as Granny's Watching, and Stephanie J. Gertrude, also known as Barbecue Lady. This campaign was not an isolated incident. It was well coordinated, sustained effort that involved multiple people acting in concert to tarnish my reputation, disrupt my work, and sight fear in, my, in every aspect of my life. First. I tell you, if I went through just one iota, one little bit of what these people have gone through, allegedly, I'd be sleeping with a song of shotgun by the side of my bed. Literally, I'd be cuddled up to that song of shotgun. Might shoot my head or my foot. Right? This was not just an isolated incident. This was a well coordinating and sustained effort involvement. Just what my work made me feel unsafe in my own life. I first became aware of Jessica Lynn Seng in 2021 when I was covering the high profile case of Summer Wells. At that time, she was relatively unknown. But as I began reporting on other cases, particularly Quentin Simon's case, attacks on me became more frequent and malicious. It seemed that as a reach that as my reach grew, so did her hostility. Seng started using her platform to, to spread false and defamatory information about me. Well, I must admit, I can't remember who they were. I can't remember what YouTube channel they were, what whoever they were. I can't remember. Don't ask me who it was. I'm not I'm not just saying that because I don't want to say names, but I can't remember who it was. And it was a while ago. I can't remember what I did yesterday, so don't ask me what I did last week because you're going to get feck all out of me, right? But I do remember watching a YouTube channel and it was just before she got her little puppy, or just after. But it was just after, I think, and there's going, and there's like say things like, oh my God, she's got that poor dog. She don't know how to look up. She shouldn't be having a dog. She don't, you know what I mean? It was disgusting. I turned it off. I thought, that isn't fair. You can't say that about someone. You may not like them, but don't say that about them. But I don't know who it was. I really don't. It seemed that, uh, that I would see her rallying her followers to discredit me, questioning my motives and my work despite the fact that I've always approached every case with sincerity and care. It wasn't just casual remarks. There was a clear pattern as I began to investigate the disappearance of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers in March. The tax against me intensified significantly. I was called a tragedy pimp and I give it that. Yep, she was. Words that struck deeply, especially because I have never sought myself personal gain from the work I do. It's like me, I'm not here to make money, I'm here for the children. Right? For the children. And when you've got people allegedly 
uh, intimidating and harassing YouTubers that are out there trying, doing their best to get, find the information and work out, look at all these little clues. You know what I mean? And he, it's just not on. You want to talk about someone, then fine. Right? If you if you don't agree with what they're doing, that's fine. Right? You can talk about them on your... But you don't rally. You have to insist that your followers, your subscribers, your members, do not contact these YouTubers. Do not approach these YouTubers. Do not do anything for, to these YouTubers. You know what I mean? Because you are saying in your opinion, and it's their opinion, what they feel, that is true, they've got a right to their opinion. But they they need to reinforce with their followers, their members, their subscribers, not to intimidate, to harass. You know what I mean? You have them coming over to YouTube channels and... They get kicked now. They're not getting kicked out because, uh, as bet as BHB said earlier, I was watching one of hers, and she's talking about oh, Sebastian, and someone said, "Can you delete such and such?" She said, "I'm not deleting no one no more because all this goes as evidence. So every time someone goes into her chat and says something malicious or something nasty." She's told her members and her, her subscribers, there's a little dot next to the names. Just click on that and it blocks them. You won't see them again. So if everyone just clicked on their names, they wouldn't be seen. You know what I mean? If everyone just kept clicking on their names, everyone, not just one person, every one of them, none of the members would see them. None of the subscribers would see them. But the messages would go up but no one would see, right? So, but they need these messages because it's proof of what they are going through. I have saw, I've never saw a personal gain from the work I do. These false claims were broadcast widely and they are clearly designed to damage my professional reputation. And I must admit, right, Chris come out with this idiotic reason behind he said I will not go on anyone's channel right just so they can get super chats and make money out of our missing son right and I've sat there and I've watched it and I've heard him say it several times I don't mind if they turn the super chats off or something like that, then I will go on there. If they don't monetize their channel, that's fine. I will go on their channel. And I thought, hold oh, on. You've got several news interviews out. Are you going to tell them not to um, get money for their for, from their videos? Are you going to tell them that? Because that's their living. And a lot of these YouTubers, this is their living. Right? I'm not saying it's my living. I like doing it. And I have the time to do it. It's not my living. I don't rely on anything from this. Right? I've only just got monetized. Right? And I need so many more hours, a few more hours to go before I can get the ads monetization on it. Right? And... Otherwise, I'm not in it for the money. I've gone this long without getting any money off it. So, and I've still paid my YouTube, my internet, my YouTube, my StreamYard, my uh, other apps that I use to get the information. You know what I mean? I paid that all out of my own pocket. But why shouldn't we get paid for it? If you're doing the research and getting this information and you're looking up and you're finding all this information, why shouldn't you? Because this is time. It takes time. It really does take a lot of time. I've had to wait a while so I could get this because 
I there's certain apps I can't get on in the USA because I'm from the UK. Now I could get a sign up and have a VPN where I could put myself down as living in somewhere in the USA. But like something else I'd have to pay for. And at the moment I'm getting my information as I need it fairly quickly. You know what I mean? I might even put this information. I'm going to check my, that app again, Scribe, it's called. If there's nothing up there, again, about this information, I might even put this information up there. On there for people to download. You know what I mean? Ah. Uh. This wasn't just idle gossip, it was organised efforts to destroy my credibility. Its defamatory statement chipped away my reputation in the eyes of those who once trusted my integrity. Campaign didn't stop at defamation. Saying no followers took things through by making false reports about me to law enforcement, which ultimately led to my, my unjust arrest. I was deeply shaken when I realised that charges were based on fabricated claims from people under her influence. The level of coordination beyond these false reports was terrifying. It was just a random person trying to stir trouble. It was a group effort. It wasn't just a random person. It was a group effort to disrupt my investigations and discredit my work. Stephanie Jo True, known online as Barbecue Lady, soon joined forces with Seng. However, the other night they was on a live on, I think it was Queen Bee's channel. They was both on there, and they both said they didn't know each other. They'd never worked with each other, but they're going to say that, aren't they? So, but apparently they didn't, didn't have each other's email. You know, if they was working with each other, wouldn't they have the email, each other's email? Train, truth, echoed, and, and even amplified the false accusations, creating a united front. The attacks were not only calculated, but also sustained over time. They got to prove that these two, barbecue lady and whatever granny, whatever granny watching or whatever, were working together. And if they can't, if they haven't got that proof, they can't say they're working together. The attacks were oh, not only calculated, but also it felt as though they was working in tandem. It's showing that no matter how much I try to move past the lies, the coordinated deficits will keep the attacks alive. <coughs> Their behaviour has extended well beyond online defamation. Together they have rallied the followers to participate in a broader conspiracy of harassment and cyber-stalking, cyber including multiple online creators, creators who seem to operate under their direction. And I'm sorry, no one tells me what to do. Not, not what, there will be no other online creator telling me what to do. And if my husband, my late husband was alive, he would say, don't mess with her. She won't listen to you. He tried. He tried once. He failed miserably. And I say miserably. And he didn't try again. And even my mum said to him, she said, you haven't learnt your lesson. You don't listen, do you? Because my mum even said, don't push. You push. She's going to dig her heels in deeper and you're getting nowhere. Right? And as I say, if I'm wrong, I'll apologise. I will always apologise and say, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But if I'm not, I will argue till I'm blue in their flipping face. Because if I know I'm not wrong and I'm right, I will stand my ground.
one of the most frightening aspects of this ordeal has been the doxing. That is wrong. Totally wrong. I do not believe anyone should be doxing, given the name, the address, everything out. That's why I go through the documents first, and I black out all the addresses and telephone numbers and emails. Even though it's a public, I haven't done it on the other ones. The ones that are on Discord have not been altered, right? Because that is for you to do yourself. If you want to black them names out, then do it yourself. I believe if I'm going on my channel, right, on my channel, I do not want to be doxing anyone by giving out their names, their addresses, their emails, their phone numbers, nothing. Right? At one point, my home address was posted online. Oh my God. And I began receiving messages that made me feel my, for my safety. I'm sorry, love. I've got a bigger dog than what you've got at the moment. I've got a feck off big dog. One that barked. And I've just trained it. I will just train a big dog. And I began receiving messages that made me fear for my safety. The idea that strangers might show up at my home has caused me to live in fear, live in constant fear. Exactly, because she's still living in the same home. So someone... It's only got to go through and find that these messages again. Even on here. I think before they release this information to the public, they should have blacked out the addresses, the phone numbers, the emails, everything, of everyone. They should have blacked it all out. But they didn't. Now, if we can do it, if we can go through a file in a few hours and black it all out, I'm sure they could do it on one file and black it all out and get it all printed off, you know what I mean? All their names and addresses should have been blacked out. Right? The idea that strangers might show up at my home has caused me to live in constant fear. I've had to take extra precautions to protect myself and my family. I'm about July 20th, 27, 23, at Birkenau. Another individual, I've never heard of Birkenau, heard of Burke Toast. Another individual involved in this cold night effort posted a comment on X, formerly known as Twitter. The post referenced another online creator. Dolly Vision, stating that Dolly Vision would be able to use a lawsuit against me to his advantage by going through my personal texts and details during depositions. Attached to it to an Ibergo exhibit one is a true and correct copy of the post made by Burnt Now. Right? Well, we'll see that exhibit one at the end. This isn't just internet drama, it has ex escalated into a campaign of stalking, threats and harassment, much of which is incited by Seng, Trude, their associates and followers. Again, we don't know who's listening. We don't know who's on the other side of the screen. Could be some psychopath. That's why I don't put my picture out there. That's why I don't put my address out there. I don't think my address is out there. I'm going to check my YouTube channel and check. I had in a prep second to spread false allegations that I was involved in fraudulent, fraudulent schemes, claiming I had inappropriate relationships with others involved in, in, involved in the investigation. Such as Seth, yes, I heard that. And Tony Mathis, yes, I heard that as well. These baseless accusations were meant to undermine my credibility and sabotage my professional work, especially in sen sensitive, high profile cases. Some people who once trusted, 
once twist my, twisting my work up just as the south. <coughs> no longer willing to be associated with me because of the reputation damage caused by these false narratives. On December 10th, 2023, I received an email from Black Screen. Black Screen TMHT. That contained a veiled threat saying. Why? Let's see what it says. You better hope your backup channel isn't connected to your AdSense account. Yeah, my backup channel is. Account on your main channel. If that gets terminated, that backup channel of yours gets terminated along with it. Oh, yeah. I might have to think of opening another backup channel that isn't. Right? Molly learned the hard way. Your time is up. You don't. You just don't realise it yet. This email left me feeling even more vulnerable, knowing that these people were targeting not only my reputation, but also my financial means and livelihood. Attached to and labelled exhibit to is a true and correct copy of the email. I've also endured constant cyber harassment and the threats against my life and safety have grown more frequent and more severe. I live with the daily anxiety of wondering who might come after me next. Every time I see a new message or post, I feel my heart rise, fearing that it could escalate to real-world violence. On December 9th, 2022, I received another email from Black Screen TMHT. Dating. I see you sitting up on your stream yesterday morning trying to blame two creators of bullying you with the intent of making you unalive yourself on a live stream. You're basically, basically saying that BS just to get attention and sympathy from people. Wow. This email was an attack on my mental well-being attempting to dismiss the real pain and harm caused by this harassment. Exactly. You, we don't know how how people are feeling because you don't see us, right? You don't see us in real life, so you don't know how anyone is feeling behind it all. So to so send an email and be so dismissive ever how someone's saying they feel is wrong. Uh, the most painful part of this is that Sang and Truth have used their platform to build what feels like a cult-like following, a group of people who seem eager to act on their behalf to spread hate and to cause real tangible harm to me. These attacks have been orchestrated in such a way that it's hard to see this as anything other than a coordinated campaign. Campaign. On an unknown date, Queen Bee, another prominent figure in the group, harassed me, posted a derogatory definition of me on Urban Dictionary, labelling me as tragedy to be, using hateful language to diminish my character. This post was yet another layer of public humiliation designed to mark and damage me, attached here to an label for. On May the 8th, Queen Bee publicly solicited donations for her legal defence for state and the money was needed to help, needed to stop me from succeeding in my lawsuit against her in Illinois. Attached to and labelled Exhibit 5 is a true and correct copy of the solicitation posted on YouTube. The actions of saying and truth and then it could have caused me significant emotional, professional and financial harm. <sighs> Their relentless efforts have made it incredibly difficult for me to continue my work to protect my reputation and feel safe in my everyday life. What started as online bullying has now become something much bigger and more dangerous. I live with the constant threat that someone would, could happen, would, something worse could happen and it's taking a tremendous toll on my mental health and emotional health. I am prepared to testify on the oath to provide details accounts of these continuous threats to my life and the severe emotional and professional harm that I've endured.
that's a right that's just right exhibit one but taste <laughs> So that needs correcting because that needs correcting. But I, it says, oh dang, I just checked the docket and it seems Queen, hashtag Queen B has filed a counterclaim against hashtag Bull on Betty. Also, either BHB never filed the paperwork to take heels of the original lawsuit, or sting it correctly, because heels has no has not been dropped as of this morning. This is on top of the fact I'll be telling you from the whole card. We just read that. Exhibit three. We've read that. Exhibit four. Please help support Queen's legal fund. Any man to appreciate legal fund for frivolous lawsuit and counter suit legal. Right? And that's going to direct to a PayPal. Right, let's see what this is. Right, Urban Dictionary. Right, Bullhorn Betty, an uneducated, loud, obnoxious, self entitled victim shaming, tragedy tipping. The verb of process there, a Bullhorn Betty enjoys long strolls on private property and harassing innocent victims of tragedy for mon monetary gain and public acknowledgement. Oh. Again, in another post. <sighs> oh, now this one. This one, you need to listen to this one. This is heartbreaking, this one. Declaration of Brittany Nicole Jackson, a.k.a. Brittany J. All right. Brittany Nicole Jackson being duly sworn according to law hereby deposed and affirmed the following. Right. Declare underneath under penalty of perjury under the laws of the Commonwealth Pennsylvania pursuant to 18 blah 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 that the foregoing is true and correct to the best of my and belief. I affirm that I am ready, willing and able to testify to these facts pardon me, facts at trial. I am writing this declaration not as a lawyer or someone engaged in a legal dispute, but as a mother and human being who has endured unimaginable pain, fear and suffering due to the relentless harassment and defamation perpetrated by Jessica Lynn Singh, known as Granny's Watching, along with her friends, followers and cult-like network. What they've done has torn apart not just my professional life, but my personal life as a mother, a daughter and a person who values kindness, honesty and peace. I have lost count of the number of times I've woken up in a cold sweat, terrified that someone might follow through on the thre threats that Jessica Seng and her followers have made against me. She didn't just stop at insults or goss gossip. She looked straight into the camera and told me, I will make you effing, make you an effing victim. Right, I want to blank that out because I don't like that. Oh, let me do Oh, I'm going to do it this way. I'll go that way.
Um, these words haunt me. It's not just fear for myself, it's the gut wrenching fear that I may not be able to protect my children. How can I explain to my kids that their mother is being targeted by strangers on the internet? People who seem intent on ruining our lives. I try to hold it together for them, but inside I'm broken. The words Jessica Seng use, uses to describe me a lazy, wasteful piece of ish aren't just casual insults. They cook to the core of my identity as a mother who works hard to give my children the love and stability they deserve. When she says these things for publicly in front of thousands of people, I feel the walls of my world closing in. My children have seen me cry because of these things. I've tried to hide it, but they notice. How can a mother explain that strangers are attacking her, saying horrible things, calling her names and trying to destroy the life she's worked so hard to build? The most painful part of this has been watching my children ask if they are safe. Wow. Now, I've heard of several YouTubers that used to be on line a couple of years ago. I've closed their accounts down due to the cyberbullying and all that. Though. They've just gone offline. They won't come back on. Right. Jessica Senga and her associates have implied that I neglect or harm my children saying things like, you will never catch me driving with my children unbuckled standing up. Those comments go beyond personal. They attack my ability to be a good mother. I have spent sleepless nights wondering if someone might actually believe these, those lies and come after me, or worse, my children. As a mother, there is no greater terror than the thought of your children being hurt because of lies and hate spread by strangers. I'm so proud of us doing this, you know what I mean? This campaign of hate has also impacted me financially. Before this started, I was proud of my work I did. I was able to support my family. Now people who once trusted me no longer want to work with me. Haven't we heard that somewhere else? That seems familiar. It's like people are backing away from them. Now me, I'm subscribed to both BHB and this young girl, this young lady. I'm subscribed to a lot of channels, a lot, and I don't watch them all. But occasionally, I do get to see them, and occasionally, I think they say some good things. Right? Just sometimes I don't agree with what they're saying, and they might not agree with what I say. But that's fine. That's their opinion. That's my opinion. The lies, the accusations, the threats have destroyed the professional relationship I've worked years to build. And the worst part is I'm not just losing business. I'm losing the ability to provide for my children. How am I supposed to re rebuild my career when my reputation has been torn apart by people who don't even know me? My mental health has been shattered by this. Every day I wake up with a knot in my stomach, wondering what new attack will come. I'm exhausted, not just physically, but emotionally. I feel like I'm constantly walking on eggshells, afraid that one wrong move will lead to more lies, more harassment, more attacks. I'm sorry to say, it doesn't matter what these people say. If they are allowed to carry on, they will, they'll just have, you could say the nicest things on your channel about everyone, right? And I'd still have a go at you for that. I feel like I'm constantly walking and more or less, this anxiety doesn't just affect me, it affects my family. My children have seen me cry more in the past year than I care to me. I had to cancel family outings, miss important moments and withdraw from people I love. Because I'm so consumed by the fear and stress of what might happen next. At times I've broken down completely. I've sat in my car in the driveway of my home 
and just cried because I don't know how to protect myself or my family from this kind of pain. It is hard. I should imagine, like, if it's a face to face, you could do something about it, you know what I mean? But when I hide behind the screen in another state, in another country, even, it's hard. And my mother just trying to raise my children and do my best for them. I've had to tell my kids why people are saying horrible things about their mum online. I've tried to shield them, but it's impossible when this campaign of hate is so public and so vicious. Your Honour, I sit here writing this. I am asking you not as a plaintiff, but as a mother who's de desperate to feel safe again. I want to wake up one morning without the fear of what might be said about me or worse, what might be done to me or my family. I just want to live my life raise my children and provide for them without this cloud of fear and hatred hanging over me. I'm asking for justice, not just for me, but for my children. Right, now there are channels out there that do. They don't call themselves crime channels, they're not. They don't call themselves crime channels. And they go through other YouTubers. Right? And they call them out on certain things, like... Bull on Betty and this young girl, this young lady, you know what I mean? But they don't say anything malicious or nasty to the point where someone's going to think, you know what, I'm going to go and do something about this. You know what I mean? They don't say anything like that. All right? I want to wake up one morning without the fear of what might be said about me or worse, what might be done to me or my family. I just want to live my life, raise my children and provide for them without this cloud of fear and hatred hanging over me. I'm asking for justice, not just for me, but for my children, who've seen their mother's spirit broken by the, by the relentless cruelty of strangers. And that's why it is, it's strangers. Brit I, I, Brittany Nicole Jackson, I'm not just fighting to clear my name, but to protect my family from... The very real and ongoing threat that this coordinated campaign of harassment has caused. The psychological, emotional, and financial damage to left scars that may never fully heal. I'm pleading with the court to recognise the very real harm that these actions have inflicted on me and my children and to hold those responsible accountable for the destruction they have caused. Again, that's just saying I understand the false statements, blah, blah, blah. Now, this one got me. I didn't even know that she was going through this. Right? Julia Valencia. Valenti. She's the dog lady. Right? Julia swore, according to law, he by disposed and affirmed the following. I, Julia Valenti, CPT, residing at Declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the blah 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 that the following is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. I am a captain in the United States Army. A captain. And a resident of Pennsylvania. I live in Moose Mooseville with my family and have committed my career committed my career to serving my country with honour and integrity. In March 2024, I was enlisted as a K-9 handler due to my national certification through several police-affiliated organisations and academies to assist in the search for 15-year-old autistic boy Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. I was contacted by Seth Rogers, Sebastian's biological father, as well as Todd Terrell, from the United Cajun Navy. My credentials were forwarded to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, TBI, and the Shelby County Sheriff's Office. Shouldn't that be some 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 county? There's a lot of mistakes in this, and I need to get these fixed. My work on the ground alongside K9 Gator was officially documented using the Pack Track application, which is utilised. I like the, the name Ara, the uh, other dog. Ara. 
ARA stands for Armed, Ready, Armed and Ready to Attack. Armed and Ready to Attack, ARA. I love that name. If I had a dog, I'd buy a big dog. And that's the name it would be given. It would be trained. And that's the name I would give her, or him, ARA. My work on the ground alongside K9 was officially documented using the Pack Track application, which is utilised by law enforcement and military agents to document K9 training and exercises via GPS. The Pack Track app can, cannot be altered and ensures that accurate records of K9 operations are maintained. A true and correct copy of K9's data report showing our work in Tennessee is attached each as Exhibit 1. This document confirms my presence and participation in the search. Despite this documented evidence and the confirmation of my credentials by TBI and SCSO Summer County Sheriff's Office, Jesse Ling Seng, known, also known as Granny's Watching, used her YouTube platform to spread defamatory, slanderous, and libelous accusations against me, stating falsely that I was a fraudulent K9 handler and that I was planting evidence in the search. That's disgusting. One specific YouTube thumbnail currently attached to to as Exhibit 2 features a photograph of me taken by a licensed photo photographer, Wise K9 Photography. This photo was used without permission from either the photographer or myself. Both the photographer and I have confirmed that neither of us granted Jessica Seng permission to use this copyrighted photo. Seng used this image, image to misrepresent and defame me, knowing full well I did not plant evidence nor commit, commit any wrongdoing. Right? The false accusations Seng made in this video have made a serious and far reaching out consequences for my career. As an officer in the United States Army holding a top secret TS security clearance, any accusations against my integrity, integrity could jeopardise my military career. It could. Losing my clearance would be detrimental, not only to my current career, but to my ability to continue my serving my country. The defamatory claims made by, made by Seng and other social media influencers have placed the Department of Defence TS security claims at risk, leaving my career in jeopardy. Any harm to my clearance could result in the complete derailment of everything I have worked for throughout my professional life. Seng's attacks did not, didn't stop there. She part participated in open panel discussions with other creators where my mother, Patty McGann Valenti, was docs. Oh, God. This creates display to a school website where she teaches elementary education, which put her safety and job at risk. Not just turning her, her job. What about the children? You know what I mean? Despite knowing this was wrong, Seng allowed this behaviour to continue on her platform. As a result of the continuous bullying and defamation spread by Seng and other co-bloggers, my mental and emotional health have suffered greatly. I have been diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder due to my active military service and the ongoing harassment has significantly worsened my condition. My anxiety has increased and I struggle daily to function both emotionally and professionally. Wow. I have been further victimised by online attacks from other creators, including Queen Bee, Jay's producing, and Clooming A, who have engaged in a coordinated effort to tarnish my reputation and damage my career. These influencers have formed what feels like a cult like group, inciting their followers to spread lies and create real, tangible harm to my life and safety. One of my employers, Scentworks K9, requested that I remove them from my LinkedIn li oh, yeah, profile due to the negative attention from these YouTube creators. 
Since he's a taxpayer gang, I have not received any work assignments from them, which has had a significant financial impact on me, especially after purchasing, purchasing a new home in August of 2023. The financial strain caused by this loss of income has been overwhelming as I've been unable to, to secure k and related work due to the damage done to my reputation. You know what, sweet? I'll just move away from this, Sebastian, okay, please. Just move yourself out of this case because it's not worth it. You're, she's got a brilliant career as a captain. She's got some brilliant dogs. Right? Yes, we need people like her on this case. We really do. But not at the possibility of her damage to her own career as a captain. She needs to pull away, back away. I think she has, actually. Attached T2 as Exhibit 3 is another YouTube thumbnail from Seng's video, where she falsely attributes a quote to mistake not a trick YouTube. This statement is entirely untrue, and it has caused significant emotional harm and reputational damage, giving future clients a false impression of my professionalism and ethics. The actions of Seng, by extension of court creator network, have gone beyond ordinary disputes. They coordinated in deliberate efforts to cause, caused, I caused severe emotional, professional, and financial harm. These actions demonstrate a well-planned and sustained campaign to destroy my reputation livelihood. I bet you tomorrow I'll wake up and I'll look out that window, and these trees by me have got no leaves on because the wind is. Rushing past my flat tonight. I live on my flat is on a corner, so catches a full grunt to the wind when it comes from a certain direction. I have been subjected to continuous harassment with threats to my life and safety escalate to the point where I now live in fear of what could happen to me or my family. Sending her network, including Queen being of influencers and made have used their platform to incite their followers to take action against me, causing real, measurable harm. I believe that actions exhibit a pattern of organised behaviour that goes beyond individual disagreements or online bullying. This is part of a broader coordinated effort to destroy my reputation, my career and my well-being. Wow. Oh, God. These attacks have not interfered with my career of blood work. Kang on and Kang on hang that, but have also left me with a sense of ongoing and imminent danger to my I am fully prepared to testify under oath and provide detailed accounts of the organised and sustained attacks I have endured, including the incitement of harassment, the threats to my life and safety, and the emotional and professional harm I have experienced as a direct result of their actions. Your Honour, I ask for your understanding of the damage that has been caused, has been done to my career and my family's safety. I hope the court will see the severity of these actions and hold these individuals accountable for all the harm they have caused. That's the one that shocked me. That one. Oh, yeah. This is the picture. Right. How I took you to through the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. I actually saw that. I saw that and I thought, what? No. And the title, Planted Evidence and Framing Career is carrying on hang like old drama stirrer. Right, there's another one. I've seen that one. Right. This thumbnail has given the impression to those following Sebastian's case that I was lying about being in Tennessee the first time. This makes my soldiers and ever rescue viewers view rescuers view me as a liar, which is very untrue. 
Even though I provide you proof of me being in Tennessee with EZ Pass receipts and Bookies receipts, photos of my canines and having people state they saw me there and spread this lie around, knowing it was a lie. Here it is, training out come for, right? Let's go a bit up here. Uh, make sure I'm getting it. It's ridiculous. Well, this is a beautiful picture as well. There's K9. There's Gator. Beautiful dog. Uh, uh, I'm not going to read these. Uh, not that it doesn't mean anything, it does. Um, this is all for Yikla Hat, about Yikla Hat, all this, right? A lot of this is redacted. See how they block this out? The sugar being redacting all the games and the dresses, everything. Right? So a lot of this has been redacted already. It is just horrendous what these people have been going through. Absolutely horrendous. And it breaks my heart to know that there's YouTubers out there like me who love doing what they're doing. Right? But there's other YouTubers that just want to rip them apart, right? Fine. I know there's YouTube channels out there that do. They play a channel 
so I'd be out to be all summer and don't rip it apart. That's fine. Right? Because at the end of the day, it's my video they're showing. That's how I look at it. It's my video you're showing. It's my name you're mentioning. People might actually come over and actually like what you've been showing them. You know what I mean? So, that wouldn't bother me. But if they started emailing me and threatening me and harassing me or personally threat, issuing threats on their on their channels, then that would bother me. You want to take my videos and rip it apart? Good. Go on. Everyone will know it's my video. So it's my video you're showing. My name, that's getting out there. So carry on. I could stop it. I could block it from anyone using any of my videos if I wanted to. And I think for the time being, I might just do that. Might stop it so that no one can use my videos at all. They can watch them, but they can't. They can't restream them. They can't stream them anywhere. They can only watch them on my on my channel, on my YouTube channel. So I might do that actually, for the time being. Not that I'm bothered because I'm from the UK, but you don't know. You don't know, and I might think. Oh, she's a cocky one. She thinks she's in the UK. We can't touch her. You wait, we'll send her this, we'll send her that. Fine. You send it me and I'll send it straight to dog. You know what I mean? And I'll do a web, um, uh, what's that, uh, uh, where I go online and do, do my uh, statement. You know what I mean? I like. I live in the UK. I can't get to the USA because I don't like flying. Ooh, they have to knock me out, put me under to get me over to the USA. <laughs> anyway, that is that, right? I'm. It's as I said. All the documents are on my Discord. Please go and click on that link, and it'll give you the two PDF files to download. Right. I'm leaving it at that because that's the end of that one. I will be back tomorrow night. Maybe I might have a quick look through the next one. Just a quick one. Quickly get through it in like the two hours, okay? Because that's an even longer one. Well, that was the wrong night page. And the other one is, I'm going, I'll pull it up and I'll tell you. Uh, that was ex Zbix was 300. Oh, this is only 101 pages, so I'm sure we could get through that in in one sitting. So we'll do that tomorrow night. Then that's the documents all out the way, right? And then I can get back to doing what I really like doing. Don't get me wrong, I love going through the documents. And reading them. I noticed several mistakes, you know what I mean? Like burnt, no, that should be burnt toast. That needs to be altered before it even got into court because it's a it's wrong. All that should have been noted before even being put out to the public. Anyway, so there are a few little mistakes I've seen. But to shame what they've had what these YouTubers have, have been going through and still going through it because they've not been stopped yet because they've not gone to court. Whether they were stopped doing what they're doing, like I don't know which one it was, but one of them, one of these defendants, was saying she'd not been given the paperwork, right? But she'd read it. So she'd obviously read it somewhere else, right? And um, she's going, so what did it say about this? Oh, that guy applied to me. I'm thinking, well, if you've read it, then you know. You know you had a copy of it when you were giving your cease and deceased. So you already had a copy of it. Right? 
So this was put out weeks ago. They've only just filed it in the last few days. Last week or sort of thing. But this was put out weeks ago to them. Because they've set giving it in the cease and desist letters. And they didn't stop. So, and their allies can't turn around and say, well, it's not fair what that's happening to them. What about when Bull on Betty was being dragged through the courts? It still is being dragged through the courts. Right? It's okay because it's Bull on Betty and it's your little sidekicks, CP and KP, taking, them, taking her to court. But as soon as it's Seth or Dr. Bounty Hunter or Nick the Hat or someone else taking your little, your friends to court, it's not on. They haven't done nothing wrong. But if they haven't done nothing wrong, I'm sure to God, they won't be taking them to court. Anyway, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for being here. If you're watching on replay, please give this video a like, share it, leave me a comment, and you can now and subscribe. Do not forget to subscribe, please. And you, you can now become a member. Yes, you can now become a fully-fledged crime and justice member. Very low price, very low price. I, I was going to go for the 99p one, but then I thought, no, I'll go for the 199. Okay? Whereas there was a like 299, 399, 499, 599, and higher. And I don't sit around gossiping about other YouTubers. If that is what you like, then this is not the place to be. Because I do not sit around gossiping about other YouTubers. Right? I am going to go and get a cup of coffee now. Take my tablet. And go to bed. Because I'm tired. Anyway, so thank you all for being here. Really do appreciate you all. Once again, give this video a like, share it, comment. And if you really like what you like, then subscribe. And if you like it even better, become a member. Okay. I am going to go now. So I will see you all. Tomorrow night, where we go through the second lot of files, okay? And... Mm -hmm.